I am digging into the corner, no problem. Look at that. To sum it all up, it boils down to MPG, the experience that you get with the motors. And lastly, welcome to Cars in Korea. I introduce newly released Genesis Hyundai and Gia cars. And as you saw from the thumbnail, I have the overall thorough, the ultimate review of this 2025 Hyundai Tucson facelift hybrid. And I have been driving this car for the past week and I did accumulate over 370 kilometers. I still have a few more days with this car. So I think I'll be driving the car for about good 500 kilometers altogether. Throughout the 370 kilometers, I drove this car as a daily grocery getter, just weekend drive, you name it, freeway, cities, everything. 370 kilometers for 13 hours and 20 minutes, I have clocked 14 0.5 kilometers per liter and i think that's right there with the official claimed mpg fuel efficiency of this um, tucson hybrid facelift i'm making an emphasis here because i think it's my first time that i actually clocked what the manufacturer suggested well just like now when i pick up the speed and merging into the lanes right just like now when i need power merging into freeway and highway i mean i floor cars <laughs> and it really is about and you do really need to pick up some good amount of speed before merging into the freeway and i just like flooring cars test driving the vehicle after all right that is what the big surprise is all about i actually hardly <laughs> never ever get claimed mpg but i did with this Tucson facelift hybrid, meaning that you will easily get the numbers above 14 kilometer per liter figure if you just just gently drive your vehicle. You will easily be able to see over 20 kilometers per liter when conditions are met. As I started off today's video, the most beautiful thing about hybrid is the MPG, or at least it has been that way throughout thus far. But I really don't think the benefit or advantage of this HEV over internal combustion engines don't stop there. It really is all about the car having the motor. Sometimes you can enjoy the vehicle as an EV, just like an EV, because when the engine is shut off, you are essentially just driving the same vehicle as an EV. It's only the motor that's pushing the car forward or reversing the car. There's no noise from the engine coming in whatsoever. Instant torque is there, no transmission engagement. I mean, the list goes on and on, but we all know that, right? So that is another emphasis that I really want to make. It's not just about the fuel efficiency, but it's the drive, the experience, and also the technology you get with the motor. Well, that gently ties together to the next topic, which is the e-motion, the e-drive, e-ride. <laughs> so it has all the e's in the front, meaning that it's all electronically controlled. So simply put, the car will actually engage the motor to control the pitching, the vertical movement of a vehicle when you go over the speed bump, the potholes, and when you need more steering wheel input, the car will help you with the steering wheel to further reduce the understeer. When you make a sudden maneuver, the car will also help you with extra counter steering wheel input. The list just goes on on and on, Hyundai Motor Group has been doing this ever since with Sportage Hybrid. I actually just finished reviewing, test driving both cars right now. So feel free to check that out. All that experience is really fresh right now with me. That Sportage Hybrid has Gen 1. It's the first generation. But this Tucson facelift hybrid being the latest car in the market and family, it has Gen 2, second generation of the E-Motion and E-Ride. Honestly speaking, there is not a substantial difference that you can immediately feel driving the vehicle however approach it as more of an extra feature added so just like now when we are driving over a bridge and when there is a strong wind coming from the sides SUVs due to the nature being larger surface on the profile compared to the sedan and higher center of the gravity it is more vulnerable to the wind striking its profile so the car tends to be a bit more shaky and sometimes rollovers do happen much more on SUVs than a traditional sedan. And that's when this second generation E-Motion comes in play. It will actually also help utilizing the motor to provide the necessary input to better help 
the car to be more stable let alone the fuel efficiency it really is all of that experience and are you going to be able to notice this yes you will feel the difference immediately especially if you test drive ICE internal combustion engine Tucson and then test drive this hybrid model right away I can assure you you will feel the difference right away so it has 1.6 turbo with six speed automatic and then you might ask me those are the techs that we've seen on other cars before Let's just look at that. I didn't do anything, but this HDA is really smooth and just responds adequately to vehicles that cuts right in front of me. And you just saw that the HDA just works beautifully and smooth, pure joy to drive. I just set the HDA on and I don't need to worry a thing. The car will do everything for me. Of course, keep an eye on the road and be ready to take over, but the car does everything for me beautifully love that you can actually manually control and set regen brakes using the pedal shifters it works on eco and my drive but when you go into sport mode and use the pedal now it turns into the good old paddle shifters that we know of you downshift you hear the engine roar, feel that torque and transmission engaging with the engine. I know it's 1.6 turbo, but still you have this engine. So it is an internal combustion engine car right now as I drive. And I, of course I'm getting the help from the motor, the torque. And you see, let's check out that hybrid digging into the corner you see i'm pretty sure the motor is helping me with the understeer right here even the mini is struggling but i am, <laughs> i am digging into the corner no problem look at that so this is the beauty about the hybrids and all the latest techs that we get from the hyundai motor groups wow all right, so well, that was a quick little fun I had with the sport mode, or maybe it doesn't end there. Let me enjoy it just a little more. Love that engine roar. Love this sound, look at that. And the brake is there, you can rely on this car. You can trust this car. <laughs> All right, enough fun I had. So let's put it back to my drive and set the HDA, let the car do its thing. I can get back to my review. So what is unique about this Tucson facelift? That region break that I just told you about. So I actually spotted this difference immediately when I was test driving Sportage Hybrid just now. So Sportage Hybrid, regardless of the drive mode you're in, you can never set your region brakes manually the car does everything on its own automatically but you can set that with this tucson facelift hybrid and you see as i go through different drive modes here you see that's the my drive and going to my drive the settings you will see there is the baby mode you see that there is baby mode and it doesn't really go into detail and explain me what the mode does or how the mode is different but it's really self-explanatory don't you think it's the mode when you have babies sitting on the second row seat it surely is the mode that you would use when you have babies sitting on the second row seat right it will provide the best drive ride quality possible however you don't have to sit on the second row seat to feel the difference i drove over 100 kilometers in each drive mode and i can tell you the baby mode i have is different from the eco mode that is for sure i set the region brake to level one accelerating letting go and this is the level two a bit of acceleration letting it go yep i do feel a difference and when you put it on the level three acceleration and letting go even if you put it to the strongest which is the level three right it's not as strong as that of the i pedal which is one pedal driving of a hyundai motor group cars so i want to say this level three region brake is on the edge of the level two of an ev almost i feel like to sum it all up it boils down to mpg the experience that you get with the motors and lastly tucson facelift hybrid specific features which are you can set your region brakes manually and you have the baby mode here android auto is associated with the hud 
Apple CarPlay is yet to be updated, but it will come, fingers crossed. Dual 12.3 inch monitors right and left that comes with CCNC connected car navigation cockpit, which gets the OTA over the air updates and this whole brand new, almost like an all new change interior, the center arm console, storages and interior design, the extra shelf you get, acoustic glasses on the first row windows. You might not think it's much of a big difference, but you do feel all of these when you are actually driving the car. When you actually become the owner of this car, you get to feel and experience every single aspect of this throughout your experience inside the vehicle, just like this. So a lot of people ask me what the difference is when it comes to the exterior, the look, right? I mean, if you do spend a good amount of time with the car, you will be able to tell the difference, especially if you are a Tucson owner, pre-facelift, you probably already noticed the differences on the exterior. However, I do understand and get that the differences are quite marginal when it comes to the exterior of this Tucson facelift. However, when it comes to the interior, it is. <laughs> an all new change. I don't think anybody would disagree with me on that. It really is about the drive, the ride when it comes to this Tucson facelift hybrid. So I really strongly encourage you to test drive it. You will feel all of the differences that I pointed out in today's video right away. If you are debating whether you should wait for this car or not, I can assure you it will be worth your wait and time. However, depending on the market, you might have to wait just a little too much. If that is the case, I might look over the other way to see if there are competitors, i.e. Sportage Hybrid. <laughs> but Sportage is also really overdue for a facelift. It is around the corner as we all know. So decisions and decisions, people. <laughs> Hyundai makes such a great hybrids nowadays. So that being said, I really, cannot wait to find out check out test drive palisade hybrid well rumor has it we will see palisade hybrid but nothing is official and i don't really deal with anything unofficial on my channel all right so that's it for today's video if you have been watching this far thank you very much don't forget to like and subscribe car scene korea if you did and you probably see a bunch of staria right there right and I'm actually here to test drive that Staria hybrid. So it's another hybrid too. <laughs> so I'll see how that goes. And uh, that will actually be a great comparison for me to make with this Tucson hybrid to that of the Staria hybrid. I'll see you in that next video. Thank you.